What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. Moving on to the next video dealing with domain and range, the next format. So in this particular video, we're going to be working with mapping diagrams. And these are these kind of diagrams where you see two circles being joined by arrows. And we're going to be stating the domain and range for them and then also stating whether the relation is a function or not. Now, personally, what I like to do is I like to take mapping diagrams and convert them to a table of values, okay? And then what happens is this left circle here, it basically represents the X values and then this right circle here represents the Y values. And so if we were to make a table of values, basically the number of coordinates that there's going to be in the table of values is equal to the number of arrows that there are, right? Each of these arrows represents a single point. So we have X and Y. This first arrow, the X value, add an X value negative one, the Y value would be zero. Add an X value of one, the Y value would be two. Add an X value of two, the Y value would be six, and then add an X value of four, the Y value would be four. And then it just becomes like the video that we did before when we were finding the domain and range from a table of values. So personally, that's what I like to do. Just convert it to this format that personally I am a little bit more comfortable with and then go into just plotting the points. So plotting these points, these scales here on the x-axis and the y-axis, they are going up by one. So negative one and zero, that's going to be right here. We have one and two right here, two and six, that's going to be up here. And then we have four and four like that. Right, so only four coordinates to work with. Remember, how do we get the domain from a table of values of coordinates or coordinates set on a graph? Well, we list the x values from smallest to largest and any x values that are repeating, we only write one. So in this table, it's nice, it's already in order for us. And usually mapping diagrams, the x values are usually going to be in order. I'm not gonna say all the time, but most of the ones that I see usually are in order. Um, and then the Y values, uh, so largest to, or smallest to largest, we got zero, two, four, and six, and there's none repeating. And then is this relation a function or not? Well, notice that there's no uh, point or set of points, no pairs of points, that have the same x value, right? All of these pass the vertical line test. If there was like another point here at this x value of negative one, then it would fail the vertical line test. Okay, there would be two y values for a single x value and that can't happen. But in this case, it's passing. And so we would say that this relation is indeed a function. And then moving on to part B over here, a new set of a mapping diagram. So. Again, there are four arrows here, right? So we know there's gonna be four coordinates in our table. So notice that at this X value is zero, we got a Y value of zero, that's gonna be at the origin. This X value of one also has a Y value of zero. This X value of two has a Y value of three. And then this X value of three also has a Y value of three. Okay, and then so from here, we just have to plot these. So uh, zero and zero, that's gonna be the origin. We have one and zero, and then we have two and three, and then we have three and three, like that. So what's the domain? Very simple, zero, one, two, and three. Range the Y values, well, the zeros are repeating. We only write them once. The threes are repeating, we only write them once. Is this a function or not? Notice it does pass the vertical line test. There is no multiple sets of points that share the same x value. Okay, so this relation is indeed a function. And then finally, part C, we have how many arrows here? We have five arrows, so we know our table of coordinates is going to have five values. So zero and zero, we have the origin again, we got one and one. Uh, we have two and one, and then we have two and two. So actually, whenever you see this, whenever you see multiple arrows coming from one X value, just from the mapping diagram, you could tell then that it's not going to be a function. 
right? Because there's it's going to fail that vertical line test. There's going to be multiple points at the same x value with different y values. Okay, but we will see it more clearly once we plot these. So we have the table of values. So let's go into plotting these. We got zero and zero. We have one and one, two and one, two and two, right? That's where that vertical line test is going to fail. And then we have three and three like that. Okay, so what's the domain? Zero, one. Okay, the twos are repeating. We only write them once. And then three, and then the range, zero. The ones are repeating. Only write them once, two, and three. Right, the set of y values for the range. And then, as I mentioned, vertical line test is failing right here at that x value of two. And so we know that this relation is not a function. All right, so just in general, what I like to personally do, at least until you get comfortable, take the mapping diagrams, convert it to a table of values. Remember the number of arrows in the mapping diagrams is gonna be the number of coordinates. Then take those coordinates, graph them, get your domain and range, and then you could visually see, is it passing the vertical line test or not? And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you wanna see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.